Hi everyone, let's play Robot Odyssey. This is a great little game from the uh, the learning company. It's related to uh, Rocky's Boots and Gertrude's Secrets. It uses the same engine as those two, those two games. It's actually based on the uh, the engine for Adventure, the Atari 2600 game, which is that game with the dragon that looks like a duck, which inspired the famous uh, strong bad lines, somebody get this freaking duck off me. It was actually supposed to be a dragon. Okay, so let's play. The Learning Company presents Robot Odyssey version 1.1. And here we go, this is the main menu. Now at the top we have options which let us uh, go to, uh, basically the main part of the game is Robotropolis. So we'll be getting into that. That is the uh, the meat and potatoes of the game. That's the main part of the game. But let's start with the tutorials, because see down here where it says Odyssey Training? Let's start with Robot Anatomy. If you've never seen or played the game before, you should probably start there. So I pressed space twice to choose that, and I'm going to press Enter to go. Welcome, traveler. Robot Anatomy. Before you venture into Robotropolis, we suggest you take our brief Get Acquainted tour. We'll show you how to use robots to help you escape the sewer level one of Robotropolis. Uh, I can press right arrow twice to begin, but first let's just press question mark for special keys. Use cursor keys or joystick to move, press spacebar button to pick up and drop objects, press R to turn remote control on or off, press C to change to cursor, control G to turn sound on or off, and press S to go to menu. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be doing this tutorial in DOS, the reason being that the DOS version of this game is much easier to read because the text is all one solid color. But when I start playing the game, I'm going to be playing the Apple II version. The reason being that this DOS version suffers from a bad crack. It has a, a copy protection crack which makes soldering impossible during the game. Soldering will work perfectly during the tutorial, but when you get into the actual game, when you go into Robotropolis, soldering no longer works. Uh, so I'm going to have to play the Apple II version of the game unless somebody can find a DOS version of Robot Odyssey that actually has working soldering in uh, in Robotropolis. If somebody has something like that, feel free to send me one, please. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to... Yeah, I'll have to play the Apple II version, because that's the only one that, that works, as far as I know, that's still available. So yeah, I'm moving around with the arrow keys, having a jolly old time going back and forth. You could do this all day, just patrol back and forth. Mm, yep. Back and forth, back and forth, make sure you're making sure no robots pass through here. There we go. Guard on duty. Alright. Follow the arrow. Yeah, getting around is easy. Use your joystick if you have one, otherwise use the cursor keys. Follow the arrows to continue your tour. They're referring to this arrow here on the side of the screen. Follow this arrow. To pick up an object, move on top of it. Press spacebar or the joystick button. Pick up this key and move it around. To drop it, press spacebar button again. Take the key with you. So I'm gonna now I'm here on top of the object, I'm gonna press spacebar. Ooh, nice little pickup sound effect there. And see, I can move this key around. I can drop it again by pressing spacebar. There we go. Nice little drop sound effect. Yeah, it's a purple or magenta key. Use the key to open a secret door. You need to take small steps to center the tip of the key in the lock. Press shift and arrow keys at the same time to move slowly. Let the police bot out. By the way, this is one thing that trips up a lot of people. If you're using the inverted T arrow keys, Taking the small steps will not work. You need to uh, use shift and the uh, numeric keypad keys in order for this to work correctly. So let's see, can I? There we go. I stepped carefully until the key went into the lock, and lo and behold, I let the police bot out. That's great. Okay, I'm going to continue following the arrows. S and T are two commands you won't need till later. If you press S, you will change to a solder pen which is uh, what most people today would probably call a soldering iron. I don't know why it says solder pen, that's a little... Just press C to change back to the cursor. So let me demonstrate. If I press S... Oh, maybe it won't work now because I'm carrying the key. Let me drop the key and try again. There we go. See, now we're a solder pen. That's supposed to be a soldering iron, that blue thing. And we can press C to change back into a cursor, which is actually this little human-shaped figure that walks around. If you press T, you will get a toolkit. Press space to drop it. So I press T, and see, he suddenly just magically pulls a toolkit out of his uh, toolkit hiding location. You can press space to drop the toolkit, and now we can carry the key around. We can carry the carry the toolkit around. It is uh, it is a it's a carnival of festive carrying objects. I'm gonna. 
take the key with me and leave the toolkit behind, because I think you can summon the toolkit on command by pressing T, so I'm just going to leave it there. This robot will help you escape from the sewer. Its name is Scanner. Hey folks, meet Scanner. See, it's scanning. See that little magenta dot on it scanning back and forth? Go inside it by moving slowly until you're exactly on its center, then come back out and carry Scanner with you. Yeah, you might need to take baby steps again. Yeah, there we go. I had to baby step into Scanner. I'm going to drop the key inside Scanner. Actually, I actually don't think I even need the key anymore, but I'm just going to leave it... Uh, I'm going to leave it there inside Scanner. And now you can pick up Scanner by pressing Spacebar. There we go. Carry Scanner with you. You can be inside a robot and still see outside. Go inside Scanner and sit on the robot's eye to use its periscope. Move off the eye to see inside the robot again. Come outside when you are done. Take Scanner with you. Okay, hold on one step at a time. I'm going to... See up here is the eye. It even has an arrow pointing at it. Eye. There we go. Now it's like a, a periscope sticking out of the robot. Great. And to come out of this, I just press down arrow to step off the eye. Come out of scanner. Pick up scanner. Take it with us. There we go. Robots make handy carrying bags for objects. Put this magnet inside scanner. Actually, robots have basically unlimited carrying capacity. They kind of violate basic laws of physics by letting you hide unlimited quantities of stuff inside them, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to put this magnet inside scanner next to the key, which we also dropped there. And for now, we'll leave scanner here because the instructions tell us to do. And if a computer tells you to do something, you'd better do it or there will be trouble. Robots can move only if the remote control, the antenna above you, is on. Press R to turn it on and off. See that little purple line coming off our head? I pressed R and it turns off. On, off, on, off. And notice that when it's off, the robot doesn't move. When you turn it on, the robot moves now. So yeah, the robots are basically activated and deactivated by the remote control, which you carry around with you, which is very handy. You can remotely turn the robots on and off without uh, needing to be near them. So we're taking Sparky with us. I picked Sparky up and I'm going to take Sparky with us. Go inside Sparky to see the wires and other parts that make it move. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're inside Sparky. There's uh, a couple of wires coming here off these two things on the left, going into this thing in the center, and then going off to these couple of attachments on the right-hand side. This thing in the center is a flip-flop, I believe, so... Okay. In the Robotropolis sewer, you won't need to change any wires. Just look at how each robot moves and choose the right one for the job. Take Sparky with you. The four white lines outside the robot are its bumpers. They detect walls that robots bump into. Inside the robot, the bumpers are crescent-shaped with arrows. Go inside Sparky to see. So yeah, see these, uh, this thing here, this uh, sort of crescent-shaped thing on the right-hand side, and this matching crescent-shaped thing on the uh, left-hand side. Those are bumpers. There's also one down here, that's the bottom bumper. And then this thing, uh, this thing up here, that's the top bumper. So there we go. The robot has four bumpers. Take Sparky with us. Robots are moved by four thrusters. Inside the robot, the thrusters look like triangles. Electricity flows through wires into the thrusters to make the robot move. And you might have already seen them, but I'll just show them explicitly. Yeah, see, there's the top thruster up there. There's the thruster on the left-hand side. Uh, that's, that's a bumper. Uh, there's the bottom thruster, and here's the right-hand side thruster. Okay, take Sparky with us. The remote control stops or starts all the robots at once. If you want the thrusters and only one robot off, use the thruster switch inside. To turn the switch on or off, sit on it and press spacebar or button. When it is closed, orange, the thrusters can work. When it is open or white, the robot won't move even if the remote control is on. So, motion of robots depends on two things. The remote control needs to be on, and this thruster switch needs to be closed like it is now. See, it's closed, meaning it, you know it's making electrical contact. If we move on top of it and press spacebar, the switch is open. The robot won't, uh, won't do anything now, even if the remote control is on. I'm just going to take Sparky with us for now, and let's see, get Scanner from the room above. Experiment with remote control and thruster switches. Yeah, I think it should be fairly intuitive just what they do, but yeah, let's do a, do a jolly little experiment and uh, put the two robots together. Let's see, now what happens if I turn on the remote control? Yeah, I think Scanner is not doing anything. The remote control turns all the robots on or off. The thruster switch controls the thrusters on only one robot. 
So yeah, even though the remote control is on, Sparky's not doing anything. But if we go back inside Sparky and turn on Sparky's switch, 